biological intelligence. After we were escorted onto the laboratory's observational balcony, the stench of freshly incised cadavers led us to pinch our nostrils. We stood clueless as to what lessons would be presented as Caliphon and his team of anatomists positioned themselves before a dissection table bearing scalpels and forceps. As the dissectors began to perform a craniotomy, Caliphon explained the composition of the brain and its opposing hemispheres. Referring to the organ as a bibliotheca of psychobiological intelligence, Croton's chief physician ascertained that one portion of this master organ controlled all conscious actions, like talking and walking and lifting, hence voluntary functions. He also elucidated that another portion of the brain dominated authority over all unconscious actions, or involuntary functions, controlling such faculties as heartbeat and respiration, thermoregulation and digestion, and homeostasis and metabolism, to name some. After anatomizing the brain, our master teacher proceeded to incise the flesh paralleling the cadaver's spinal column, transitioning into a forum anatomy. As Caliphon separated the connective tissues from their vertebral articulations, he exposed a labyrinthine circuitry of nervous fibers, bundled into a long, thin, tubal cord. Stemming out from the posterior cranial floor, the spinal cord extended down the spinal column through the protection of vertebral foramen, and then disseminated into all sections of the body. Caliphon went on to explain that knowledge and memory do not reside solely within the bony enclosure of the skull casing. Rather, similar to the mycelium networks or root systems of the olive trees, muscles, nerves, and glands, having connectivity to the master organ through a sophisticated neuronal network, each in possession of their own intellectual faculties, synergistically and systematically, harmonize with the whole of the being. Memories then, like all intellectual information, are stored within cellular compartments situated throughout all sectors of the body. Furthermore, and specific to those attending this particular seminar, the ability to excel as an athlete is greatly enhanced when this communication network is consistently challenged and instigated. The more one burdens their body, or the more experiences one's neuronal networks register, the more one's cellular informational storage capacities are amplified, bypassing conscious arbitrations and resulting in spontaneous functionalities, hence the term anatomic retrospection.